Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got one replay, yep, one single replay, in the Tier 8 Soviet Premium Medium Tank, the STG. Now this is a tank that you can either have in the unskinned version, which is the one you see in here, the STG, or you can have it in the STG Guardian or Guard, one of the two, I think it's the Guardian. As a tank, it's pretty good. I like it. I like the big honking 122mm gun it's got. It's got good accuracy. It's like 0.33 base accuracy with this 122. That's uncharacteristically accurate for a Soviet gun. It's really nice to have. It's very similar to an Object 416 in the fact, in the, well, just the way it is with its back mounted turret low to the ground feel. But, number one, it has better gun depression than the object 416 because it's got six degrees of gun depression unlike the 416 which has three which just means that well let's be honest three degrees of gun depression is absolutely disgusting and it's just horrible to have on a tank whereas six degrees is pretty nice it means you can use ridge lines generally it mean, well i say generally use ridge lines it means that basically you're not going to hit a little small little ridge it on the floor and your gun just goes you know i'm just going to point at the sky because that's a great target that I want to hit. So, the 6 degrees gun depression is lovely. Like I say, the accuracy being really nice is good. It's got good camo as well. Like It's not got as good a camo as the Object 416. Because the Object 416 has ridiculously good camo. But it's still got good camo. So, all round, it's a generally nice tank. Because the mobility is not too bad either. Now, the tank is being driven by the Randy Duck. It's a community replay in this one. He submitted this one. I do have one or two extra community replays that are going to be shown on the channel at some point in the near future. Like I say, if you want to ever, if you ever have a game that you manage to get recorded where it is like this and it's not the replay system, then just DM me on Discord through our Discord channel that's down below, and I'll take a look. And if it's you know if it's a game like this, then you can get it featured on the channel. So. Randy does have a YouTube channel as well, and he has, since the last time he was featured on the channel, he has actually started doing commentary on his YouTube videos as well. So if you want to go follow him, give him a subscription, give him a like, go subscribe to his channel link that is down below, and go get him more subscribers. He has a lot of good games just like this on his channel, so go enjoy those. Now I will start with, he is a gold noob, Randy is a gold noob, he makes... No apologies for that. He's got full gold on this tank. And honestly, you don't need full gold on this tank at all. This tank is has good... I mean, number one, it carries enough rounds. Number two, it does have good enough standard pen. It's got 212 standard pen, so we'll go over that. It's got 212 standard pen. It's got 248 premium pen. The standard pen is good enough for pretty much everything you'll see at tier 8. You'll need the premium when you're facing tier 10s, generally. But for the most part, the standard rounds are enough. But... Like I say, Randy is a gold noob, so we will fire the full prem. And we'll get that one out, out of there, it's whatever. So, in this game, he has taken up the position that I would normally take up, which is a very powerful position at F67. Used it to good effect, got good shots off at the people in the town, and now it's the time that he wants to progress. He's decided to move along into the town and along, along these ridge lines here. He moved into a position where he could spot the AT-7 and the AT-7 gets shut down by the T-77. So now he's thinking he wants to move up and try and see anything and get shots at anything that might be sitting at around D-3-4. And if he gets to a certain point, he might be able to spot anything that's camping on their camper hill as well at B-2-3-4. So you see he is moving in between the bushes here so that at least he's got some sort of concealment in front of us. But then he gets spotted and he's like, right, what's just detected me? It's the camping challenger at the back on that hill. That is always a problem. And now he's been spotted. He's going to pop a shot on the move and he's going to try and just keep wiggling. And it's always something you've got to do when you're trying to get away is keep wiggling. Because like you see there with that moment he got actually got unspotted, the shots just whiffed him because he, they didn't know which, which way and how he was going. So now he's got himself into a good position here where he can actually get good cross shots here with his team. They're going to be preoccupied with what's in front of them, and he's going to be able to stay here and, for the most part, probably stay on spotted while he gets to farm the Draugen and this heavy tank as they move up. He's basically using the TD position that the 
what a lot of TDs tend to seem to take from this base. If they spawn in this place, sometimes you just see that it'll be like a, a ball or an iron rain, or like the AT7 was, where they just sat on this little ridge. They keep hiding behind it like Randy's doing right here. He's managing to keep himself covered from the enemy team, not take shots, but keep poking out and try and get shots at them. And at the minute, obviously, they've got a very effective crossfire going off here. He gets a nice shot into the paladin. That looked like it might miss there, but it actually went in. And he's got the he's got the full rear of this paladin. He's aiming for the tracks here to hopefully track and pen him, which it goes straight in. And with having the 122mm gun, having the good 390 alpha, more often than not, when he shoots something like a paladin through the tracks, he will, well, he'll pretty much track and pen it every single time. He gets another shot through the back of this paladin now with his 390 alpha. He is a 50-50 for a one shot, but obviously the damage RNG, no he's not. You see Randy there when he waited to take the shot, he got he reloaded. He could have shot him, but he waited till the paladin was actually behind a load of bushes. So that meant that obviously his camo was a lot better. He's shooting through bushes and it meant that he probably won't get spotted if he did fire at that guy. And that, that was the case, he actually... Shot the paladin without getting spotted. He's now moving up into these bushes ahead to try and get some shots at the guys camping. He gets a nice shot through the T20, the T25 slash two, because it's not a dash two. He gets a nice shot through that guy, but he gets spotted. So he dives, ducks, dip, dives, and dodges. Gets low and stays below their gun line. Now he's got a very slim shot of that paladin. He couldn't quite make it. The Tiger P finishes him off. And you see, at the minute, he's up to 5.2k damage. The game is pretty tight. It's 6-5 at the minute, which means, you know, only a, they've only got one tank advantage, which is close. He pulls up on the ridge line to get a shot into this Tiger P. And with 378 health, the Tiger P manages to get finished off with one shot. Now, obviously, with 6.0... Damage RNG is slightly fortunate there that he actually did kill it with one shot because that's just the way it is these days. You tend to roll for stuff like 364 like he did against that Type 59-2. But he did have a nice shot into the back of that Type 59-2 which is good. And he's just sort of at the minute he's sticking here because it's working for him this position right. This position at this second in time is working for him to get shots at these guys. But he actually gets spotted there which I assume is by a TD, it's probably that T25 slash 2 or something like that from the back at B23 that's using the concealment, using the bushes, probably got a camo net or something like that and spots him up. So now Randy's re realised that that position that he was in is possibly not that useful anymore. They know exactly where he is. He's getting out spotted. So he's decided, you know what, I'm not going to stick there. And actually thinking about it, what looking at the minimap there, when he changed up, it might have been a Udez 3 which obviously he's going to really, really struggle to spot. It also could have been the Challenger in the bushes at B2 as well. So, what Randy's doing now is doing what you want to do. If you're stuck in a position, well, I say stuck. If, you, if you're in a position that you're getting out spotted, you're not going to be able to spot them and get good shots at them. You're probably going to take shots in return. The best thing to do is just get out of that position, re position yourself into a better place so what he's doing now is actually going towards where his teammates are he's got the heavy tank here at g4 and he's got three guys at h1 so what i'd be thinking right now in this situation i'd probably want to get closer to my guys at h1 try and get to the position where they are just in front of them at rocks at g1 because we know there's stuff along the one line so if he can get there and spot up those enemy team Number one, he'll get assistance. Number two, he'll move the team on because at the minute they're just determined to stay exactly where they are. But, I mean, they're not the healthiest in the world. And they're against some selfie TDs. The T25 slash 2 gets spotted up as he's making his move across. And it looks like he is going into these bushes over here. He'll be hoping to get a shot himself. At the minute, he's up to 6k damage, which is really nice. The Type 59-2 gets spotted. He kind of rushes the shot there into the Type 59-2, but unfortunately it misses. He spins around, which is honestly, when you're in a tank like the STG, where you've got a fully traversable turret and you're back-mounted, and you've got the same amount of gun depression all the way around, it's sometimes nicer to do exactly what Randy's doing here, which is spin round, get the gun over the back, so that if you pop over a ridge line, if you need to run away, you can run away quicker by just pointing you from the other way, obviously. So if you get spotted, you can get away quicker rather than backing out of a situation where you get spotted and then you're really slow to back out of the situation. You end up losing like a lot of health. So 
is a little bit concerned about the T25 slash 2. Obviously, he knows he can kill him in one shot. But at the minute, it's slightly awkward for him to get a shot at him. And if that T25 slash 2 pokes up a little bit too much, he will spot him. And he's in that sort of situation where he's in this position where he might get be able to get shot by the Challenger or the Udez. Now, the T25 slash 2 really helpfully there actually gave him a shot and he managed to shut him down and he's up to 6.2k damage which is really really good number one for a tier eight and is just well it's, it's especially for a tank like the stg which reloads quite slowly you always need this kind of game where we're at now i mean we're into the 11th minute where you know you just need that little bit of extra time to keep the gun reloading so the stg for its accurate gun and its decent mobility, it's good camo and it's high alpha. That is the one thing it does struggle with a little bit. And that is the fact that its reload is very slow. But, you know, that's just the way it is if you have higher alpha. Now the Type 59-2 there gets spotted up. And now Randy knows exactly where he is. He's been wary here because he kind of wants his heavy tank T-77 to come with him. Because he knows that obviously if... Sorry, the I-6, because if they gang up on this Type 59-2, the Type 59-2 is probably going to get one reload in, shoot one of them, and both, one of them is going to reload before he will, and they'll be able to finish it off. So Randy's going after him. He gets spotted by this Type 59-2 who is running away. The food bug there throws up his aim. He gets a nice shot through the back. And the Type 59-2 is just sprinting away into the town to stay in cover. Now... He might be able to get that shot a little bit earlier if the food bug hadn't intervened. The food bug obviously is incredibly annoying and I hope that that will be something that gets fixed soon rather than later. It's been around for a long time. can really throw, off, throw you off quite often when you are trying to get a shot and then it just randomly throws your gun in the air. It's pretty annoying. So now the Type 59 just 2 anyway is trying to leave the town. Randy spots him up but... He gets also spotted up. Now, Randy's got the health, right? Now, that IS-6 has also blapped him. Randy should be able to finish him off, we hope, if he finds him. And the, obviously, the hope now is that he doesn't take a hit. Now, he manages to finish off the Type 59-2 without taking the hit, which is just what he needs, really. Because, obviously, he's on 922 hit points. He takes the hit from the Type 59-2. We'll probably go down to, like, 650 hit points. 650 hit points, you know, I'm obviously guessing at a damage roll here. 650 hit points, though, would make him a two-shot. Because you count a Udaz firing with its 390 alpha gun, and then the 280 alpha from the... Co not Conway, the Challenger, sorry. Same line, two tiers lower, though. The Challenger, anyway, the, the damage rolls from those two together would mean that he'd be a one-shot. So he don't want to take that hit. Unfortunately enough for Randy, he actually didn't take the hit there from the Type 59 2 and he managed to finish him off with no retaliation, which is good. Puts him up to 6.8k damage, but he's got the health now. That's the thing, he's got the health, he can take a risk. So he can take the risk and just get straight across this open field and hopefully, hopefully light up these two TDs. This game has been a lot closer than it definitely should have been. At one stage it looked like they were quite handily going to win and then all of a sudden they all start dying. And it's been a pretty, it's been a pretty easy game for Randy. He's been getting into nice positions everywhere to get shots at people. While his team has sort of, it's been one of those games where his team has been a bit like cannon fodder, where they've just been throwing themselves into stupid positions, but at the same time they've been lighting up the enemy team. And Randy's just been in that perfect spot, and he's put himself in that perfect place to go get the damage, which is, well, it's what good players do, really, isn't it? Let, let's be honest, that you tend to get you put yourself in the positions where you can get the most out of a situation. So he's now hoping that this challenger or the Udez is in this corner. And he actually spots the Udez up there. Okay. That's a really odd position for that Udez to take. Especially late game. It wasn't even in any bushes. Well, that was weird anyway. But unfortunately, he actually missed his shot there, Andy. Trying to rush the shot in. He, if he'd let it aim a little bit longer, he probably would have got it. He's going to fire through the wall of... At this Udez, which means he gets the nice pen. And obviously the Udez has absolutely no armor. And without the siege mode, this is going to be an awkward fight for him. And in fact, the Udez is like, no, I'm out. I'm out. Well, mate, it's too late. Oh, no. It didn't actually pen with that second shot. It only tracked him. But this, this Udez is absolutely screwed. If I was this Udez at this point in time, 
I wouldn't have bothered running away. I'd have probably put my siege mode up, got two shots into Randy, and perished. Right? That's just the way I'd have done it. Because for him, really, the situation that that was in, one-on-one -on -one with this STG, he really either needed the challenger to come help him, or just accept his fate and think, you know what, I'll take the extra 800 damage that I can get on Randy, and then end my day. But he's actually managed to sneak away. But not for long. Randy manages to snap the shot straight in. And the game ends. Because the timer ran out. I didn't even realise the time was running out. So he could have actually had a little bit more there on that with that challenger. But he finished with the victory anyway. Five kills. 7.8k damage. 2.5k. Well, nearly 2.6k base XP. And that Yudas actually had a really good game. You see there, 5.5k. Because he was probably in that position in those bushes on the sniper hill. For most of that game. And probably would have f farmed all of Randy's team. Which is probably how all of those died when they were attacking like the Dragon and the Tuck Down Dash 2 and Paladin and all that. But yeah, he finishes the game with 5 kills, 7.8k damage, 1300 assistance, well for nearly 1400. So that's like 9.3, 9.4k combined. Ace tanker, high caliber, obviously top on his team, like to say 2.6k base XP. That's a ridiculously good game for a tier 8 tank. That's... Like those once in once in a couple of months type of games for a t tier eight game tier eight tank sorry and it's always really nice to do. So as always everybody, thank you very much for watching. Go subscribe to Randy's channel. It's a great replay, and I'll see you all next time. A great success!